I want to go through the adjuster for the balancer system for the KLR650. I'm going to use KLR600 parts, so if they look a little different to you, that's the reason why. The first thing we have to ask is why do we need to have some kind of an adjustment for the balancer? As a chain wears, and this is the chain that, that runs the balancers, as a chain wears and as the sprocket it runs on wear, it can begin to set up an oscillating motion on the run that is not under tension. And uh, as it does that, it makes noise and it can also hit the case and start to chew it up. And that's why we need to be able to adjust this thing periodically. What Kawasaki came up with for this system is an eccentric shaft and on that eccentric shaft is mounted the adjustment lever that the spring attaches to and that goes through the uh, little case here and on the other side is what we've come to know very affectionately as the doohickey and that is the doohickey the doohickey is held in place by this bolt and this of course is the bolt that we loosen every time we do an oil change and allow that uh, adjustment to take place and then tighten it back up. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble all of this and then we'll go through how it works. But before I do that I want to give you an opportunity to see what the progression has been in doohickeys from Kawasaki over the past 25 years or so. This is the original doohickey that came on the KLR 600s and the early KLR 650s. As you can see, it's just a stamped piece, stamped out of sheet metal. And it's really quite thin and uh, not, not a real substantial part. This is what they've come up with on the Gen 2s. And as you can see, it's much thicker. And it's also an investment cast steel part, so it's quite a bit sturdier than the, uh, this original stamp part. You can see that it has a little bit more adjustment range, but it looks very, very similar. So let me go ahead and put this together, and then we'll come back and go through how the thing works. I've got the mechanism assembled into the case, and this is about how it sits on the engine. On the back side, you can see that the lever here, to which the spring is supposed to be attached moves the eccentric in and out this side of the eccentric is moving in this direction with the idler gear mounted on that and the chain over it as we move this lever back and forth we're adding tension to this run of the chain the spring will apply the proper amount of tension to get uh, the chain good and tight and once that's done we tighten the bolt on the other side and so what the doohickey really does is it holds the adjustment. Now the question is why do I need to replace my doohickey? What's wrong with the old doohickey? What's wrong with the 2008 doohickey? Well there's not much wrong with the 2008 doohickey. It's pretty good. The early doohickeys though did break and I think that there were two reasons why they broke. Number one is the adjust the torque value for this bolt is really low it's not much more than just snug a little bit more than that but not a lot I think a lot of people would come along and really over torque this bolt and what that would tend to do is deform the doohickey since it's only made out of sheet metal and then it would bend and crack and so on but another thing that goes on here I'm gonna pull on this lever as the spring would and if you look at this part of the shaft you can see that it is free to wiggle and the direction that it's wiggling in actually is untensioning the chain but it's and so since it's untensioning the chain it can sit there and vibrate now we've got this part of the doohickey snug down solidly to the to the case but yet this thing can sit here and vibrate and of course it's vibrating thousands of times a minute and over the course of you know 10,000 miles or something that vibration is enough to with with a, a this being held solid and this vibrating is enough to break the doohickey here or break it down here that's why they broke 
One from overtensioning, and uh, the other thing I think is from the fact that this was not a very substantial part, and this thing can vibrate like crazy as the engine's running. One thing that uh, the torsion spring cures, in my mind, I could be all wet, but the torsion spring is wrapped around that shaft and torsion or works in torsion to pull the doohickey in this direction. And when it's doing that, the only way the shaft can rotate is in a direction that actually tightens the chain. And obviously the chain will not tighten itself, so this tends to vibrate a lot less. The other thing is that the aftermarket uh, doohickey part is machined to considerably tighter tolerances than the factory parts, and it just doesn't allow for that much vibration. That's why people say, go ahead, put the torsion spring in, and put the aftermarket doohickey in. It cures a couple of problems. Um, so that's really how all this stuff works, and uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was clear enough. Talk to you later.